Oh no, free body diagrams and trusses. Ugh, that's that's rough. That's a rough. If I were if I were a dog, I would say that would that would be rough. You know what I'm saying? Um, really, what this is testing. You know, I don't know if you vaguely remember this, but it's the method of sections. It's not the method of joints. Method of sections. Now, what we're trying to do is hold on. We're trying to find the force in the member BC. Now, how do you do that? You could use the method of joints. You go one by one and figure out, but that's too time consuming. You only have about eight hours to beat this exam. So how are you gonna do this in a timely manner? Well, let me tell you, you use 79% of the exam time to solve this problem. That's how you do it. No, I'm just kidding. What we gotta do is create a free body diagram and you really have to know how to create a free body diagram and know how to solve non-concurrent problems. What the hell does that all admit, all that mean? I I don't know. I'm just speaking words. Um, is someone in the comments down below tell me how to learn English? So thank you. That would be much appreciated for this series. Um, but essentially, we're gonna create a free body diagram that cuts through the truss. Now you be you may be saying, "Whoa, dude, you can't do that." Well, no, I can. I can do whatever I want. Well, and I'm gonna cut it right there. So uh, we're gonna draw. We're gonna create a free body diagram on this side of the truss, which cuts through BC, which is the member that we're interested in. So that means there's going to be a force over here, there's going to be a force over here, then a force over here. Uh, FBC, we're going to call it F, and then maybe this is F1 and F2. Those are the reaction forces when you cut through the truss. Now you'd be saying, well, now we have, what, three unknowns and then all these other very uh numerical values for the forces acting at i h g and f what, what are we going to do with those well let me tell you i'm going to call this bc actually fbc so it doesn't confuse with that point f um we're going to use the moment well let me tell you why we're going to eliminate some unknowns by using the moment this is how you solve non-concurrent problems if you know what i'm talking about so we're going to take the moment about i and call that the positive orientation. Now you'd be saying, well, what the hell does that even mean? What that means is that we don't have to worry about the forces at I or that are collinear with the point I, which means there is no moment caused by F1 and F2. There's only a moment caused by one unknown, which is the known, which is a variable we're looking for, FBC. Crazy, I know. So what that means is that F1 and F2 have no moments relative to the point i means we don't have to even worry about them for solving this problem so we're going to look at fbc fbc cause positive rotation relative to i based on our defined orientation which is going to be five meters so we're going to say five fbc there we go we're trying to find fbc and we're we're already halfway there and then we're going to see that there's a force at i doesn't matter who cares about that but there is a force at h meaning it's three kilonewtons and it's in the negative orientation. Are you kidding me? You're making my life difficult. I got to keep track of these negatives and positives. Man, oh man, that's probably the worst thing. Solving a problem actually metho methodologically, if that's even a correct word, uh, right? And then getting the wrong numerical value at the end because I, cause I couldn't use my calculator properly. But anyway, uh, negative three. Uh, again, that's five. Easy clap. Uh, G, a uh, another negative three um because it's going to spin in the opposite direction um and that's going to be 10 meters away if i'm counting correctly and then we're going to have f which is another negative three they really like these negative threes man they're going crazy out here uh, we're going to add that and then the distance from that is obviously 15. it's all from the point i and this is going to be equal to zero because this is a statics problem there's no dynamics going on here if there was some dynamics going on here then you will need to know, know some moment of inertia the angular acceleration oh my god don't even get me started um so we got five fbc i'm just gonna clean this up a little bit so negative uh let's make it dirtier to me you get to start off dirty to make it clean uh five fbc uh minus 15 minus 30 minus 45 which equals zero. Um, add these up, we're gonna get FBC, five of those, don't forget the five. So if you add these up, that's gonna be 75 plus 15, that's that's 90, right? Uh, yeah, no, 75 plus 15, 
that is a D 90 no it is 90 what am I talking about please tell me I'm doing this right F B C is then 90 over 5 man oh man what is that that is uh that goes in one time is four left over so that's 18 and what is that kilonewtons so FBC the force in the member BC is 18 kilonewtons and we drew in the right direction if you wanted to know that uh, it is a positive value meaning the orientation of uh, the vector FBC is in the correct direction meaning it acts horizontally towards the negative x-axis if I call this x and y it's pointing the exact same orientation because this bad boy is positive meaning we did our orientation or defined the orientation of the vector correctly. If it was negative, that would mean it would be pointing in the positive x direction. But that's a little side note that I like to ramble about.